There's a three-step process that I personally go through when creating a story in my images. Before I share these steps with you, I'd like to invite you to first think about creating images in the same way an artist would approach creating a painting. Every artistic piece has come from a place within, whether inspired by a personal experience, an emotional reaction, or a moment of deep inspiration. It's not always clear when we look at another's artwork what the story is, but if we ask the artists themselves, the story often quickly becomes clear. I use the analogy of an artist creating a painting when I go through the three-step process that you're about to hear. If you choose to try this process, not only will it become easier to create a story in your photographs, but your imagery will mean a lot more to you too. Now, before you can even think about creating a story in your images, you've got to pick a subject. Now, the best suggestion I can give to you about this is when you arrive on location, take the time to tune in to the environment around you. If you've been on one of my workshops in the last few years, you'll know that when we arrive on location, the first thing I get everyone to do is to go off and tune into the environment and pick a subject that interests them. Now the reason I do this is because if you think about creating a story, and usually when we talk about stories we're talking about writing or reading, if you're asked to write something you're going to create a much better story if you're writing about something that interests you or that you're passionate about. And the same goes with reading a book. You're far more likely to pick up a book and read it if it's about a topic that inspires you, interests you or that you're passionate about. But if somebody gives you a book about history and you're not really interested in history, chances are you're not going to pick up and you're almost guaranteed not to finish it because it doesn't interest you and the same thing goes when you come onto location every person that comes here is going to see something slightly different in the landscape so before you can even begin to tell a story in your image find a subject that is interesting to you and when you're walking around if there's a particular thing that you keep getting drawn to it's a really good idea to consider including that subject in your image because you're getting drawn to it because you personally have a connection with that subject. So to give you an idea of what I'm personally feeling drawn to today and what I'm going to compose or create my stories around, it is these beautiful rocks and outcrops and piers that are going out into the sea. And I'm going to explain to you in a minute why that is enticing me today and why that's going to be my main subject. But while I'm walking around, that is a thing that keeps coming to me and that I keep looking at is these rocks out in the sea, how they're framed against the sky and the sea and the back of my mind I'm thinking they would make beautiful minimalist long exposure shots. So that is what I'm going to be focusing on today and the reason for that is because of the conditions and the weather that we've got today and that leads very nicely on to the second thing to consider when you're trying to tell a story in your images. Now, when you're looking to create a story in your images, considering the weather conditions that you've got on that day is so important. You really can get good photographs in all weather conditions, but how you approach that weather condition will determine how good your images end up becoming. Because I think we all kind of know that certain techniques and certain subjects work better in different weather conditions. So today, for instance, there's not really much going on in the sky. We have got some definition, but we've not got really interesting clouds. We've also not got any interesting light. It's very overcast today, so we're not going to get any intense bursts of colour or intense shards of light, which is often what many of us look for and crave for when we're photographing landscapes. We're, we're very unlikely to get that today. And also when it comes to the sea, it's the sea today isn't quite completely flat calm, but it's also not really wavy and choppy either. And this is one of the reasons why I'm so drawn to these rocky outcrops today, because it's allowing me to find a subject in the scene that's not going to be affected too much by the light, that's got the water going around it, that will allow me to do minimalist long exposure shots with, which will hopefully allow me to make the most of the beautiful bluey grey sort of colour that we've got. Now of course it does take some time and practice to learn what sort of photographic techniques and styles work best in different weather conditions but the more that you head out and the more that you tune into the environment the easier it's going to become to identify what sort of techniques will work best in the conditions that you have. 
But one thing that you don't need to learn, because it's innately within us, is point number three. Of course, some of us are more in tune with our feelings than others, but there's no denying when you come onto a location that some, sometimes we feel more connected to that location than other times. This is why some people enjoy going up the mountains more than they enjoy coming to the coast, why some people enjoy photographing wildlife more than they enjoy photographing landscapes. Everywhere you come will make you feel slightly different, but the weather conditions and the location all play a part in this. Another thing that plays a really important part in this is the colours that are present on the day. And I'm going to speak more about colours on my channel moving forwards because identifying the colours and how they make us feel can have a really big impact on the ability that we have to then create stories within our image. And today, as I've already mentioned, we've got this beautiful blue tones in the sky. And blue can represent that coldness, that bitterness. We are, of course, in the winter right now, so that plays in really well with that. And blue can also evoke a sense of calm and tranquility within us, which minimalist long exposure photography is fantastic for doing. Now that we've identified what we naturally feel drawn to, we've looked at the weather conditions and worked out what sort of imagery will work best in these weather conditions, and we've thought about how the conditions today and the location is making us feel. It's now time to put all these things together and create an image that tells a story. My plan has been to photograph the pier behind me here with a beautiful rocky outcrop. Potentially add a little bit more blue to it in post-processing to bring it that colour or convert it to black and white to really emphasise the blackness of the rock against the lighter sky. But in the time between me filming and getting set up, we now have a lot of rain over the sea and you can barely see the mountains or anything behind the pier. And the light's also got much flatter, which isn't making it stand out as nicely as it was about 20 minutes ago. So this image isn't going to work out quite as how I had envisaged, but what I'm going to do instead is share with you an image that I took back in November during one of the workshops I was hosting here where we did this exact technique. I decided to keep those workshop images for another video, as I was pleasantly surprised when I got home to realise that the image I had envisioned had actually turned out okay. In the field, I was a bit disappointed that the snowy mountains in the distance were barely visible, but this image does depict the story I wanted to tell. It includes the subject I was being most drawn to. The flat dull conditions favoured the use of filters and long exposure photography. I felt cold, calm and expansive on the day, which I feel this image portrays emotionally. Telling a story in your images isn't about what other people think or feel when they look at your work. It's about your personal connection with the world around you and how you created your image to showcase what you saw and how you felt in that moment. When you're creating a story in your images, it comes from within. If you see the image you want to create in your mind before you photograph it, the story will be so much easier to create. The same can't be said if you take photos and then think of the story afterwards. The story must be clear in your mind before you press the shutter. So if you want to create images that tell a story, why not try this three-step process? Look around you and photograph a subject that you naturally feel drawn to. What is the weather conditions and mood like on the day? And how do you feel in that moment? By doing this, your images will begin to speak for themselves. As always, I want to say a huge thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to support my channel, you can send some gratitude using the super thanks button below or by signing up to be a monthly channel member. All the gratitude received will go towards the continued growth and development of this channel. And if you'd like to work with me personally, all the links to my services can be found in the description box below. I look forward to seeing you all again next time.